we passed each other on a Chinese golf course yes. 10 years ago, as one does. What, in China? Yes, in yes. China. Both rather disgracefully. We, I'd gone there for money to play golf. <laughs> I'm very ashamed. I don't know why Matthew was there. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a terrible thing. Oh, no. And uh, anyway, that, and, and I think one other time in L.A., we sort of nodded at each other. Yeah. And we, yeah, here we are promoting a film, and we really don't know each other at all. This morning is the, okay. by far the most time we've spent together yet. Right, what a film. Seriously, gentlemen, I know you're here, but I'm not blowing smoke up where the sun don't shine. Well, I sort of am, but it's justified. I couldn't wait to see this film, because I love Guy. No Guy. I couldn't wait to, wait to see him. Uh, to see the film, um, but I was my expectations were so high. It was a bit dangerous, you know that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but w what a wonderful movie! Um, let's talk about the characters. Let's, first of all, let's talk about Hugh's story of how the heck you happen to be in this. There's serendipity, and then there's some bloke falling off his bike, and you <laughs> helping him to his feet, and then Guy Ritchie being on the next bike behind. Yeah, it was a very odd story. I was just off to get married one day <laughs> and I was crossing the road and a man falls off his bike in front of me and I said, oh, I thought, well, poor old poor chap, I helped him up. Turned out it was uh, Guy Rich's assistant and Guy was on the bicycle behind. He said, sorry, Hugh, thanks for picking him up. He, he's always falling off. And we dusted him off and then Guy said, oh, by the way, Hugh, um, uh, there's a script I want to send you. Sends me this script and I, I rang him back. I said, I can't possibly do that. And he said, no, I think you can. And uh, I was foolish enough to believe him because it is a bit of a stretch. It's I thought, you know, after decades of sounding like I sound in films, people would just laugh me off the screen. This that was my worry. Okay, but I've got to tell you, you 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 might steal the picture. I don't know if I can say that with, with Matthew the plum. Being here. He yeah, does. You, yes, unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell us about your character. Then Matthew and I will tell everybody else how good you are in it, and you don't have to listen. Oh, well, uh, well, I mean, the joke was, the joke for Guy asking me to do this was that I play a private investigator working for a tabloid newspaper. And obviously, you know, I've been ranty about that stuff for years. And uh, I got that joke. And uh, that's who I am. And he's really seedy and uh, and uh, sinister and blackmails everyone and utterly two-faced, utterly repellent. Uh, but he he serves in a way as a kind of narrator of the story as, yeah. as well. He's a sort of structural device, and um, I have to say, in the end, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Even his leather jacket is seedy. Yes, his I, look yeah, is seedy. Yes, yeah. it's, it's ox He's blood greasy, red. Isn't yeah, he? his paunch is seedy. How dare you? His lank hair is seedy. <laughs> his spectacles are yeah. seedy. There's nothing. His delayed not... blinks oh, are seedy. Oh, how seedy is that, Matthew? Yes. Is there anything seedier? <laughs> I don't think so. If there is, I don't want it. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, this is what I think. Okay, you're the actor, but this is what I think. I'm thinking. There's a bit of Gary Oldman in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if actors like this or not, but I don't care. Uh, there's a bit of Gary Oldman in there. There's a lot of Ben Kingsley and Sexy Beast in there. Mm, maybe yeah, yeah. and there's uh there's there's a, a little there's a, there's a lingering tribute a, a sort of visceral ethereal tribute to michael Caine in there somewhere as well well none of those things are remotely deliberate <laughs> what i actually did was a lot of the these cd private investigators who used to hack my phone and other phones like mine i i've got to know them now over the years they've actually come over from the other side right and now uh help me and hacked off and so I had lunch with some of them, and uh, I, I did draw some inspiration from them, but I can't say that I drew inspiration from any of those marvellous models you've just Well, said. it doesn't matter. I mean, that's what I saw. I saw that's what I heard. Yeah. I actually was waiting for you to appear on screen, and I suddenly, then I realised, oh, my goodness me, that's him. That is him. Yeah. What do you think, Matthew? Yeah, you, well, I have, we haven't seen Hugh Grant like this before. And uh, I was telling them last night, you know, you see someone who you have an expectation of, and they come on screen sometimes. Sometimes it can take a viewer a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, a half hour, an hour, or never to come around to seeing them as that character. You you, you buy them immediately on screen. The first thing, yeah, you, you it, after a few minutes is when you say, wait a minute, is that you? Not that you, and do I believe in the character? You believe who the character is right, right away. And then later you go, gosh, damn, that's you. Tell well, us. that's high praise. That's it's high praise. Matthew McGonagher is a proper actor. I mean... Well, he's you know. one, of, one of those, what are they called, those Academy things? D yeah, he did it's win one a of those. Oscar. It's one of those. Let's not forget that. How many people have you acted opposite that have won Oscars? <laughs> well, a lot. No, I know, I know. I'm saying <laughs> that how, are we into double figures yet. Meryl Streep, yeah, you know, know, half know. woman, half Oscar. I know. Yeah. I know. How does it feel? 
Well, always terrifying. I don't think you're in a scene together in no, the movie. You're, you're not, are you? No. No. So, so you don't, mm. you don't. You, when did you first meet properly? China. No, China doesn't count. Well, I mean, this, this morning. morning. You were passing like <laughs> chips in the night. Yeah. This morning. This morning. No, last night. You must have met last night. You just said last night. Yeah, I mean, we took pictures together. We didn't. We didn't talk. And how's it going? Very badly. Yeah. <laughs> Instant we antipathy. Make it, we make it to life. He's fantastic, we'll this guy, Matthew McConaughey. He's, he's a fantastic human being. Yes, and I kept saying to a guy, because I, I shot my whole bit of this film in a, in a couple of weeks, and I kept saying, how oh, was Matthew McConaughey? Because I think you'd been shot out by then. And he raved and raved. <laughs> Apparently you were always in his trailer, drinking always whiskey, having a laugh. a lunch, yeah. and lobsters and teas. He's and funny, isn't he? And there's, oh, so, he's a trip, man. there's so much of Guy in this film. Isn't oh, yeah. it? You can hear him, you know, the fact that you go shooting. Uh, you think, <laughs> the barbecue The barbecue is his barbecue the that table. he invented, oh, yes. That's you... his table. And those tables are for sale. Uh, I'm sure they are. Mm. And um, the, the, the law of the land, which is uh, in the opening scenes, that's his pub, but that... He does have a pub called The Law of the Land. Have yep. you been to it yet? We'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, for, for You're doing a press junket there, yeah. Oh, OK, because the food is unbelievable. Okay. But that's not the actual pub, is it, the one you use in the movie? No, no not, I don't think... Not. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, not. it's not. OK, so tell, tell us how you got to be in a Guy Ritchie movie, Matthew McConaughey. Guy Ritchie sent me a script. It was a short script. It was one of the uh, original <laughs> versions. Um, and it just immediately, to me, was like, OK, if I'm going to work with Guy Ritchie, this is the type of world I want to work with Guy Ritchie from Lock, Stock and Snatch and uh, um, Rock and Roll. So I said, um, and I talked to him and he, you could tell he was very loose with what it was. It was a bit of a fable, but he could tell he was open to saying, you know, we're, we're going to work on it and do you want to play? And um, I did. You did play and you absolutely love it. And how about Michelle Dockery, who you're married to? Congratulations. She's outstanding. Congratulations man. on being married to her. Yes, right? Yeah. Well, what a talent she is, man. I think and she, she stepped right out. Oh, she really I mean, did. I mean, come yeah, on. Man. But everybody's brilliant in this. Guy gets everybody to be brilliant. That's yeah. what he does. How does he do that? Well, look, I'll say this about about working with Guy. I've never worked with someone like him before. And what I mean by that is <laughs> you had a lot to say. <laughs> so I want to hear how you, how you dealt with this. Yeah. Um, an actor goes away and works on their scene. Yeah. Especially if you have a lot to say. You work you, you That's work a on. dialogue heavy Dialogue every Big movie. Yeah. Yeah. Some of yours are massive, your yeah. monologues. Yeah. yeah, he's telling the whole story. Shakespearean almost. Yeah. So, with Guy, though, and Guy wrote what you're working on, what you're preparing for, but then the morning of, he always like say, well, let's hear it. And he hears it. And he's listening like he's listening to it the, for, for the first time. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, jeez, that shit. Who wrote that? And like, well, you did. He's like, oh, we got to change that. <laughs> and then he'll, he'll start... Improvising, he'll, he'll he'll listen to the music and find the meter, and it's maddening because you go, you just changed my entire scene, every bit of dialogue. But about five minutes later, you kind of recognize usually that what he's coming up with in the moment, for me anyway, was better. Yeah, yeah and you can tell that with, as, as a viewer when you watch it. It is such an in the moment film. All his films are. Uh, Hugh, um, your take on the same. Well, story. yeah, the, the, he does change stuff, but equally because he's lovely and fluid, I. I he lets actors change stuff too, which is something I love yeah. doing. Um, you know, I've got always three or four alternative lines scribbled in the margin, yeah. and I like to start throwing them in on takes four, five, and six. And uh, you know, I have had directors before who said, "No, no, no, dear, let's stick to the text." But he loves it, <laughs> and uh, so that worked very well from my. Did he point call of you view. ladies? Not yet. <laughs> when we're at lunch, often, ladies. when we're at lunch, sometimes he says, "Ladies, this has gone too far. Ladies, this is going in the wrong direction." But this is called gentlemen, isn't it, bizarrely? Old girl. Yeah. yeah. And the working titles that I've got written down here: um, "Tough Guys" and "Bush." I mean, the, the production company's "Tough Guys," isn't it? It's "Tough Guys Production." But were they former titles of this film? Do you know this or not? Yeah. Well, along the way, it was, it was always "Tough Guys," I believe, and then I know "Bush" came across. Um, my ears <laughs> along the way here in post production. What are you giggling about, Grant? Well, I mean, it's every schoolboy's joke, isn't it? Uh, but when we is... were teenagers, we used to go into pubs and say to the barmaid, "Excuse me, if you got a black bush, the well, Irish whiskey." But this is different, <laughs> Bush, because it's it's cannabis. Yes, it's weed. Yes, yeah. it's marijuana. Yeah, we say it. It's yeah, it's it's uh, sk what it called skunkola. What skunkola. Are we, we got that scene in there with Jeremy Strong and I. Yeah. All right, so your character is Mickey. All yeah. right, uh, do, can you can you just pitch Mickey to the audience, please? Ah, uh, Mickey, uh, kingpin, uh, 
marijuana tycoon billionaire trying to retire gracefully, um, sell his business for a fair price. But in this world, <laughs> no one wants to give a fair price, and everyone, all the little little lion cubs on the outskirts of of, of Mickey's kingdom, come in there and try to pick my pocket. It's so good, because I've already um, forgotten a lot of the characters, because there are so many brilliant characters in there, and I can't wait to watch it again to focus on so many different, because when a scene opens, you focus on, I don't know, the the centre of the scene from the off, and then you figure, the peripheral characters and dialogue that's going on, you sort of lose that, and that's why you have to watch things again to watch the scene differently. And I can't, with the China man and all this kind of stuff. Well, Guy always likes a good riddle, you know, in in his whodunit stories, and um, this has a lot of that. He, and your character, he tries to morally justify why earning hundreds of millions of dollars selling weed is better than, than dealing cocaine and heroin. And that happens pretty soon in the film. Yes. Yeah, Guy and I talked about that. We wanted to ma- I wanted to make a, a delineation between that, and I, and I think he did too, the difference between that and, 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 and selling the heroin. So he sets the record straight um, with the man in the scene about the difference between what he does and what I do. And what was the most enjoyable bit of the movie for you? The, the, the working with Guy was the, was the funnest part for me because, as we said, you've got to be an athlete working with him. You've got to be willing to, to find the song and riff and be open to a riff that, that he has because, oh, you know, I'm, yes, you can prepare and preparing helps, but be ready on the day to completely... Have an entirely different paragraph of dialogue, if it's better, and a lot of times it is. And as you said, you can come up with your own stuff, and if and, and he's got an ear for that, and if he likes it, he's like, that's it, um, or, or he'll add on to what you're saying. But you better be, you you better be ready on the day. Don't get locked into anything. Don't get locked into anything. Work with I think that's the key. You know, the, the more films I've made over the years. The more I've realized that the, the more pre-rehearsed anything is, the more scripted, uh, the more preconceived, uh, the deader it will be on the, uh, and it really uh, on is. the day. And, and really I think is. that's part of why his films work the way they do is because they're minted in the moment. Well, because it gives, the, it gives you an edge. You know, if the actors aren't quite sure what's going to happen in the scene, but it's, it's good enough for a print, then as a viewer, we're not going to be quite sure because the people who are making it at the time weren't quite sure. And that, well, that definitely bit, comes across. There's a lot of things I know I'm saying up there that when you see them on screen, that's the first and only time I said them. Good, <laughs> that's the story. Uh, right, you were 50 this year. Congratulations, happy birthday. Thank you. And you celebrated by doing what? <laughs> what did I do? Uh, my wife kidnapped myself and 100 of my friends. We went out to the desert for uh, 82 hours. And then what else did I do? Delivered some uh, meals to firefighters out in the West Coast. And then I started, uh, said hello to Instagram. You did say hello to Instagram. And um, that 82 hours, uh, th- there's a bit of a gap there in that story from the first minute to the 82nd oh, hour. Oh, it was wonderful. Was yeah, it? yeah. She, was, she, she you tell basically us about? put together a miniature festival oh. in the middle of the desert for my 50th birthday. What a laugh. Uh, we had great food. We had uh, revelry, libations. We saw the sunrise twice. <gasps> uh, it was outstanding. It's, it was it was outstanding. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Uh, you became a professor of somewhere? Yes, or University of Texas at Austin. What do you do there? Started a, uh, a class about five years ago called Script to Screen. You'll dig this. Uh, you know how different, especially talking about this film, how different the first script is to the final product mm-hmm. that's on screen. So what we do is I'll go work, and we did it. We're doing it with the gentleman. That's a class that's actually we're, we're, uh, we're going through and teaching this semester. So Guy and his uh, people, we gave everyone in our class, 35 serious film students at the University of Texas, the very first script. They declare what kind of film they think it is. We give them the next script. They talk about the changes. We give them the next, the next, then we give them the shooting script. Then we go in and we break down two scenes that are pivotal in the, in the movie. We show them a first assembly, then we show them the final film. So they see how much of a difference the original script was from the final film. So we're putting some science behind the magic of movie making. And in, in this movie, especially with your character, Hugh, there's a lot of references to filmmaking. And yeah, that's, that's a, Guy he, again, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think it probably comes from him. It also makes the character, it's an, it's an interesting new dimension to this private sleazy private investigator that he's also a big film buff and when I was doing the costumes I made up a kind of mood board that wasn't private investigator it was more uh film buff uh, you know so I, I look a bit like Fellini 
in the uh, my costume, my my sunglasses and all a that. Of Robert Evans. Yeah, a little bit of Robert yeah, Evans. Yeah, a little bit of Robert yeah, Evans. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking to Fellini, Dolce Vita's, uh, they're rerunning it, the BFI on the South Bank in 4HD or something. Are they? Yeah, and it looks magnificent. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Have you seen it? Uh, of course I've seen it, yeah, yeah but I haven't seen it. seen it. I'd love to go and see that. Awesome film. Yeah. Awesome film. Right, before you go, um, favourite Christmas film of all time? Favourite Christmas if film you have one. of all time. It's a trick question. Uh-huh. There's only one answer. Starts with It's and ends in A Wonderful Life. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's an easy one, though. I'm trying to oh, think of what I'm showing my kids now. I'm, no, I'm trying to think of my kids Not for kids, by the way. No, the, kid, the kids find it dull. Uh, that is a good one. You can't argue with that. Scrooge? You like Scrooge, Bill Murray? Ah, uh, no, that's not one. No, that's not my top. Not my top. Not my top. Muppet Christmas Carol? No, Miracle not a Muppet on Man. Thirty Fourth Street? No, 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 no. Running no, out no, now. That's on that one. Well, growing up. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the the Christmas movie was never a Christmas movie. It was just very exciting that the Sound of Music was on. So that's my Christmas movie. I, oh, st- I still love that film. Music. And I was caught mm-hmm. <laughs> by my wife the other day alone Here we go. watching The Sound of Music. Right. This is a woman who comes doing? from the north of Sweden where men are men. Yeah. They barely speak. They chop wood, they carry they're water. Nordic yeah, yeah. They, I, mean, they're re- they're, I don't know why she ended up with me. And I think one of the lowest moments so far of our marriage was she caught me watching The Sound of Music by myself, singing along <laughs> with Mother Superior to climb every mountain and crying. And because it was so moving, it's such a there's such moving words. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.